Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I plan to retest the shuttle because I have a new computer right now and I'm going to be using KOS for launch and re-entry but because the physics rate will be better with the new computer that may throw things off. I already tested it during a live stream and our landing wasn't quite right but that might have been because I didn't line up correctly. Uh, but I also need to test out this scanned arm because uh, during the live stream it didn't work properly and I've reinstalled Inferno Robotics which is used to control it. It always works inside, whoops, it always works inside the VAB as you can see I can control the pitch and such like that but outside it didn't work so we'll see about that. Uh, this is configured for a Keyhole Satellite Replenishment Mission, uh, the Keyhole 9 that I have been trying to do a servicing mission to for a while now. So we'll be launching from Vandenberg because the Keyhole satellite is in a polar orbit and uh, we, we aren't going to do that mission yet. I'm just trying to make sure that everything else works out. Uh, we'll have to relaunch that Keyhole satellite to make sure that it is possible to reattach these large film return capsules to it. Basically it will have expended its film return capsules and we're putting new ones on with the shuttle. This is worthwhile because each of the keyhole satellites were like at least a billion dollars. The program in current dollars was about 20 billion dollars. So, uh, and there were 20 of them. So, yep, anyway, definitely worthwhile to try and service them. Uh, this might have been something the shuttle would have done, but uh, it did not get to do. So, anyway. We will test the launch out of Vandenberg. Mainly I'm interested to see whether while recording uh, the shuttle can operate basically in real time with this new computer. That will be an interesting thing. So let's, uh, well, let's check the crew. All right, we'll just take whoever and let us launch. So we'll be timing how long the ascent goes. Uh, we are going to be going into the inclination that the intended satellite would have been in, which is 96.4 degrees. Uh, we're not actually lining up with it in this case, which allows us to launch in daylight, thankfully. Uh, and Shuttle V is the one for Vandenberg. Okay, so I'm going to note the time here. 3.11 on my clock. Uh, that's uh, the recording time because it has the seconds. Uh, from Vandenberg, it doesn't actually need much of a roll program. It just goes straight out this way. Oh, there's a little bit of yellowness, so I guess it's not perfectly real time. Well, let's. It look like this. It's not as uh, nifty as launching from Cape Canaveral because I've got Katniss Cape Canaveral for that, but. At least it seems to be smoother. Okay, and depends how much lag there is. Okay, booster set. That might be maybe two seconds slow. So we're like at maybe one to two percent slower than real time in the game. Because of our light payload, we have a lot of Delta V, which means that on launch, this is at more risk of overshooting. So we'll take a look at how it goes, how it moderates that. Normally, the shuttle would not launch with so little. It is rolling over now. It probably would not have done this uh, early on. If it was servicing a Keyhole 9 satellite, it probably wouldn't. I don't think the Tedra satellites were available at that time. Okay, coming close to the end of the burn, and we see that the shuttle has thrall down, but we do still have substantial G-forces, which is why it's sometimes hard to manage the ending orbit with this. Also, we have to make sure that the external tank gets discarded. So, waiting for cutoff here. Okay, and 46, so about 6 seconds late. So it took 
six seconds more in real time than it did in the game. Okay, it has ended time warp, and we are gonna do the OMS burn. Uh oh, oh no, oh no! Uh, it lit the SRBs in the bay uh, for the little film return capsules. That was not intentional. Um... Well, that's interesting. I, I have a staging problem. <laughs> we were not supposed to do that. Oh, uh, it staged all the... Oh, no, that one I want. Most pods. Staged all the little film return thingamajigs. I did not check my staging. It's fine, the shell is big and they're very small. And we're not doing that mission yet. We were just carrying them up. But, of course, they would have burned a hole through the bay in real life. Okay, and let me just kill rotation. And for my own convenience, I'm gonna bring it a little bit higher in 160, which is... It's told to just go there because that's the minimal amount I wanted it to reach. And, uh, yeah, please don't ask me how to install the shuttle or anything. I've done plenty of videos on it. You'll just have to search for it and try your best. It's not easy. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. So, first the arm. Can it work now? Uh, it doesn't seem so. Yeah, pressing the button. Okay, no, you're not negative. Move negative. Why is it both move negative? Positive, negative. This one is positive and negative. This one says negative and negative. Say it in the VAB like that. Well, let me just invert. No, it's not changing the numbers. And that locks it, so that's not going to help. Reattach fixed mesh. I don't know what that means. It doesn't do anything. So yeah, I don't know what's up with the arm in 1.8.1. I swear I've used it before, but I'll have to see how to fix that. Okay, other things. We need to see how these pop off. That's why I have the little tugs here. These are the little Canada tugs. Uh, just in case the arm didn't work. Okay, though there are other reasons why we might... The arm might need to uh, hang on to the keyhole satellite if we could use the arm. Uh, so that's another thing. Couple? Well, it decouples them freely, so at least it doesn't seem... I wish I could... Well, that's the external tank. No! Let me go back to the shuttle. I wonder why it's reading half of the HTPB here when there's none. Oh, I guess it's counting the nitrogen? It really ought to do that. Okay, anyway. So... But it was really frisky out of the bay, though. That was... Oh, I bet it's gonna go to the external tank. No, it's the shuttle. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know how to reduce the force on the docking ports so that they don't fly off so much. In the VAB, it didn't give me an option for that. Anyway, we'll, we'll call that all right for now. Let's see about the re-entry business. I don't really need to close the cargo bay yet, but... It's not counting the thermal stuff against me anyway. I'm gonna waste some fuel as well. I'm gonna double check that uh, fly-by-wire isn't enabled the atmospheric autopilot fly-by-wire. Uh, that was one error I think I made during the live stream. I think it was active and that caused excessive RCS fuel depletion. Okay, one and a half hour orbit and so I usually like it. Very polar, and we will wait a day. Though, Edwards is a little bit off from Vandenberg after all. So, but on re-entry, the script should be able to correct for that, hopefully. We end up at Vandenberg again. Well, we know that didn't work out. Alright, so bringing up KOS. Turning off Smart ASS, of course. And what we're most interested in is making sure that we're going to the right coordinates. 
so I've noted them here. Um, this is uh, correct Edwards location, but I've got sort of a the the problem is that where I placed the photo scenery thing for Edwards, I had made my own sort of weak imitation of what Katniss Cape Canaveral did for Cape Canaveral. And I placed that a little bit off from where Edwards actually is. And the reason for that is because the terrain was flatter. So I wanted a nice flat terrain underneath. So that's why our longitude is a little bit different from the real longitude of Edwards. And, um, let's see, everything else seems to be right. Uh, and of course the latitude is a little bit off too. All right. So, run shuttle re-entry. Uh, that so sort of terrain was placed with Kerbal Constructs, so. We are coming down with a lot more fuel than I would expect to come down with for a regular mission, so we'll see how much it has left over. Hopefully it'll have a generous amount for us to actually conduct the mission with. Okay, we have ignition for the re-entry burn. It settled down pretty nicely, so that's good. Didn't overuse the RCS to get to retrograde. Alright, we have concluded the retro burn. And it has a negative periapsis, which I believe the shuttle would have had. So far, 192 meters per second left, out of a little bit more than 400 meters per second that was available. But that includes the amount for, like, circularizing. Let's see how well it does this now. Again, the previous time I did this, the atmospheric oil pile was actually interfering, so I don't know how well it's going to do this turn. You can see even this turn requires a fair amount of delta V. And uh, there's also the roll overshoot problem, but it seems to have a handle on it this time. Okay, yeah, it settled pretty well. This is much better than the previous computer. You might go like, how is that possible? The previous computer, you know, which was an i7-4790K, uh, you know, should have been able to do, I mean, why, why should it be computer dependent? But nevertheless, with the previous computer, it would wiggle around a lot. Uh, go figure. Sometimes things operate differently on different computers. It's one of those things. That actually gives me uh, hope that some of the other KOS programming I've done might be more accurate than it was as well. I guess I'll have to test some of the more adventurous stuff. But yeah, generally that turn was not done as well by the previous computer. It's the same program. I mean, it's the same KOS script, same shuttle, same, same Kerbal Space program and everything else. Oh, don't ask me. <laughs> so, I guess we should check whether we are actually in line. I mean, uh, of course, the... World will rotate a bit by the time we actually get there. We're over here now, over the North Pole, and we're coming in like that. It's hopeful that we will hit Edwards. Edwards is here. That's Vandenberg. So we're coming in like this, and the Earth will rotate. Okay, we're uh, mostly on track so far. We are at 92 kilometers. You can see the relative altitude and relative longitude. As long as those numbers are close together, it's good, and in fact, we are pitched at 40 degrees, which is what we want to be at. Right now, we're just perfectly on track as far as previous testing had con uh, had been concerned. It can go pretty far off, actually. It doesn't need to be within a tenth. It would still be all right, but yeah. And it's just as I say, I'm saying that, it goes a little bit further off and it pitches down. This script uses pitch as well as rolls, especially, I mean, of course, doing the S turns to dissipate energy only works if you're going too far. Uh, just in case, this also tilts down a little bit to get a little bit more lift if we are falling a little bit short. We do have an overheating stabilizer there, well, rudder, 
the stabilizer itself is fine, but we have an overheating rudder. Don't remember seeing that previously. The numbers also get a little bit messed up uh, when the shuttle bounces up. There's uh, this compensation for that, but uh, looking at the numbers once it starts going up is a little bit complicated. Has gotten some of the lift here to cover the ground that we need to reach Edwards with. No. Well, seem to be in line with it now, which means by the time we get there, we might be over towards Vandenberg again. Okay, we are doing some turn towards Edwards. Hopefully that will help. And we are seeing how it handles this and how much fuel it uses for the S-turns, of course. Oh, it seems to be using the RCS a little bit more now at this altitude. Let me see the control thing. Well, still very moderate in terms of how much control it is. It must be just sort of going back and forth a bit. We do have overheating on some stuff. Um, is that the body flap? That's the engine, I think. I really don't want to lose an engine. That beats me why it should be susceptible in the first place. Oh, uh, it looks like the overheating indicator has gone off. Alright, so right now we are up here. Still in Canada, I think. Or over Canada. And it's using a bunch of fuel again to maintain the pitch. But that's because it's pitching beyond 40 degrees here. Here it's going down again. And then it uses less pitch authority because it's balanced for 40 degrees, not for 45 degrees, of course. Still, at 40 degrees, it uses a little bit to hold itself. Okay, now coming down a bit more sharply. We are over the United States, I think, now. Coming in there. Soon to be over Nevada. Okay, still turning. Again, basically this turn is all about correcting our orbit from being in line with Vandenberg to being in line with Edwards, because the way I timed it, we would have been in line with Vandenberg instead. So that's why it's turning to the left here. And it looks to be doing a decently good job of that. The question is whether we're going to end up at Edwards. Right now, it's still looking like uh, we're going to hit the Sierra Nevada there. But, again, aerodynamics. I wish it wouldn't use quite so much fuel, though. We'll have to tweak that. Well, uh, that is looking a little bit better, though we still have to turn further to the east there. But now that'll probably be up to me. It will hand control to me at 15 kilometers. Uh, Vandenberg's over there. You can sort of see it there, actually. So, will it leave me with enough ability to get over there? We really need to allow it to turn even more aggressively. It's not, it's clearly not using all of its cross range ability. So, okay, well, the target distance is getting down to a minimum there. Okay, ready to take control here. Okay, I have control. Oh, oh, don't do this too much. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh, uh -oh. oh, no! Oh, gosh. I've done a horrible thing. Okay, well, clearly I need some more practice with taking control afterwards. Uh, I should put parachutes on this. Uh, I don't know if... Having them EVA and parachute down works, but if there was ever a time, not EVA report.
There's a lot of them, though. They should all be in render range of each other, at least. One hour, by the way, the whole time from launch to, well, this point, I can't say landing. Uh, there are a few more Kerbals. I can't... I guess I can't EVA them? Hold on. Where are my Kerbals? Oh, okay. Valentina's here. I don't know where the others are. Um, there's so many pieces of the breeze, so... We'll just focus on Valentina as a representative. Are the others around? Okay, well there's Magsy, Newton, and Murden. And they're all in render range. Okay, uh, Valentina has hit the ground. Magsy... Oh no! Okay, okay, uh, mitigate, 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 mitigate! I haven't had to do this a whole lot. Okay, uh, Newton is fine. Uh, oh, we must have lost the fourth one. Oh, and I can't even turn back to anything. Uh, tracking station? Well, this is an inauspicious start, let's face it. Uh, that was my fault, I probably just yanked the shuttle a little bit too hard. We will have to do better in the future, but at least the performance is promising, if not oh, anything else. I guess, I don't know what happened to Valentina and Magsy. They were on the ground, but they don't show up on the map for me to recover them. Are they auto-recovered, or did they meet their demise? Well, they're none lost or missing. Uh, I guess... Going back to the tracking station, put them all back into the shell crew module? Uh-oh. I don't know how far back it went. I thought it was just gonna abandon the remain. It's still on a suborbital trajectory. Oh. Well, we might still- well, the KOS script is not working. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is it? I don't know what state this thing is in. I was not expecting to revert. I thought it would just abandon the mission. Uh, well, it's... Oh, no, 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 stop that. It was in the middle of the OMS burn. I don't know what happens with the script if I just try and run it right now. Mm, it's probably not a good idea. Um, we'll abort the descent. And wait another day. And then run the script again. Well, looks like we get another try, I guess. We're not gonna have a lot of fuel. And this isn't really a place to do this either. You know what? Um let me see what it does. Eh, no, it probably will just... Yeah, it's probably not. Let me just get it into orbit first. So, we're gonna have a lopsided and somewhat short orbit. And it's not gonna have a whole lot of fuel. <laughs> this, is, this is probably not going to work out, but we'll see. It's not going to have a lot of fuel to do anything in the atmosphere. Okay, well, yeah. I'll time warp another day, and it's probably going to meet its demise anyway. Only 99 meters per second right now. Or 100. Not great. Ah, uh, yeah. We've got 22, 23 meters per second post-retro, so that's not a whole lot to just even turn the shell around and get into the scent orientation. Well, anyway, I don't know if anybody has an idea for what's up with the Infernal Robotics, the Canada arm thing. 
That's one problem. It would be nice to be able to grab a hold of the keyhole satellite once we get there, even if we have to use the tugs to put the new things on. We would only have to use the tugs to put the new things on because the Kerbals can't really grab onto them and move them. Otherwise, we could have... Which is what basically the astronauts would have done. Seven meters per second. Yeah, that's not going to work out very well. We'll see what it does. Probably a disaster. But this is just a simulation, then, you know, many, many simulations end in disaster. That's what they are for. Well, we are at 75 kilometers now, still going pretty fast, and we still have 6 meters per second left. Um, yep. Well, it's using some of the fuel to pitch up now. We've bounced up and it's trying to slow down by pitching up and so just using the RCS. I did, however, neglect the fact that the Delta V reading here does not include the propellant in the forward section, the crew module. We still have some here, so even though it reads zero there, we still have some propellant for control, but not a whole lot right now. I'm not sure it's going to work out here. Well, we are here. So maybe entering Nevada, but the situation ain't great. As far as our propellant. Of course, the main upcoming flaw will be whether I can control it properly or not. So that's a whole other thing. If we get to that point. Okay, yeah, that Mon 3 is going down. Once that's done with, I don't know what's gonna work or not in terms of the control surfaces because we will have some aerodynamic control, just probably not enough. Just please do straighten up before we get to that point. <laughs> Turning with a 30 degree roll is probably not the situation we want to be in. And that's the end of that. There's no more RCS control. Maybe. Oh, the yaws. Yaws, yaws maxing out. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh, I mean, we're fairly slow at this point. <laughs> this is not ideal. I'm not going to try and take control for a good long time here. Mm, worried about the G-forces. We have seen that high G-forces can rip the surfaces and everything apart. Okay. I think we're slow enough that I'll try it. No, uh -oh, we're flat. Uh, oh, no, okay, okay, no, stay there, stay there. Uh, get back over to the program vector. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, all right, all right. Uh, 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 okay, okay. No idea where Edwards is. Uh, we are going to try and land this. Okay, landing gears down. Feels a little bit nose heavy. Very nose heavy. That might be atmospheric autopilot. I might have to switch that off on future landings. I don't know. Uh, we're going a little bit slow here. Train's also a little bit weird. Oh, okay. And the uh, drug shoot automatically came out. Brakes. I don't know why I didn't have more sounds right there. But okay. Well, anyway, we, we saved them on the on the retry, even though it was super awkward, and yeah, more work needs to be done. So anyway, that was a test of the shuttle with the new computer. 
And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.